If I said that all of the most feared creatures in the universe are voiced by one single human male, what would you say? Impossible. Well, I'm here to tell you about that man, Nicholas Briggs. The words he speaks are cemented into the public conscience and have become as iconic as Doctor Who itself. Even though he didn't come up with the phrases himself, his brand new interpretations have made them resonate with a 21st century audience. How does it feel being the voice of most children's nightmares? who first asked me that question when I did the uh, Doctor Who Weakest Link and I, I think I said something like I'm very proud because I've never really encountered a child who was genuinely seriously and uh, and detrimentally traumatized by the Daleks I think that the Daleks are um, you know, it's a bit like that thing when you're a kid and you put a sheet over your head and you go, ooh, I'm a ghosty, and no one actually believes that you're a ghost. Who are you going to call? Yes, must I ain't afraid of no ghosts. <laughs> it's just, it's a signal that it's something that's meant to be scary. Skaldak. What inspired you first to be an actor? Was it the Doctor Who when you were a kid? Oh, yes! I suppose it must have been Doctor Who that inspired me to act in the first place because that's where I got all my ideas about stories. And you know, Doctor Who and all the films I used to watch on TV when I was a kid and old series like, um, you know, uh, Voyage to the Bottom of the Sea and Tarzan and Lost in Space. I think it was because I loved stories so much that I wanted to sort of find a way of bringing them to life. And I used to do it on an old tape recorder by recording myself sort of doing these stories and playing all the parts. It's dreadfully sad. <laughs> um, uh, and um, I think that uh, becoming an actor was just a sort of natural part of that. And I just went through this sort of really, uh, well, traumatic is too strong a word, but I w when I was very young, I, I went on stage at school and, and I passed out. The moment I saw the audience, I suddenly felt sick and everything sort of glowed and wobbled. It was like a sort of old Doctor Who video effect, you know. And then the next thing I knew, I just heard the teacher reading out my lines for me. And then, you know, however many minutes later, I, I you know, regained consciousness. So for many years, I was terrified that I thought a natural result of me standing in front of an audience would be that I would lose consciousness. <laughs> and so it wasn't until I was about 16 that I, I every year they, they were saying at school, you know, who wants to be in the school play? And, uh, you know, I finally put my hand up and I, and I did it and had a fantastic time. And, and the buzz I got from being out there, you know, pretending to be someone else, and, you know, uh, entertaining people sort of convinced me that that's what I wanted to do. What's it, Alec? Exterminate. 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 I don't like Dr. Who. How did you get the classic Doctors to be involved with Big Finish at the beginning? I'd done the um, BBB videos where I'd met uh, Colin Baker and got on with him really well. So Colin I could actually pick up the phone to and um, and, and Peter and Sylvester, we, we sort of, we, it was easy for us to contact them and we knew they were interested in doing Doctor Who stuff so I mean we just asked them. Um, and they were interested. Tom was a, a difficult one because, you know, um, I he's never satisfactorily explained to us why he wasn't going to do this before. I think, you know, there was a time, a period he went through where he possibly had trouble acknowledging that there were other doctors. And also, I don't think, you know, I don't think Tom really grasped what it was or was particularly interested in it at the time. I mean, he's spoken about how when he... Uh, that he never really recovered from Doctor Who and that it was his favourite time. And I think he had a bit of a hard time accepting that for a number of years. And he says that now he's come back to it and embraced it, he is having an even happier time than he had on the TV show, which is a massive compliment to us. And I have to say that I never expected, you know, Tom to be, to embrace us so much. 
Um, and then, of course, we Paul McGann, who we thought we'd never, ever get. I mean, we thought we were more likely to get Tom, but Paul, Paul McGann's agent um, you know, said, yeah, yeah, he'd be interested in doing that, and we kind of got him in. So that, that's how it happened. I mean, you know, the, the bottom line is, the, the answer is, we asked them. You know, uh, we didn't we didn't have to take any of them out for sort of snap up meals and champagne or anything. We asked them and they said yes. And we obviously did the right things because they wanted to come back and do more. How do you deal with criticisms? The funniest thing, Daniel, about people criticising your work is that they expect you not to be affected by it. So why do they say it? Why? I don't know. It's it's a bit, There's something that I said about this a long time ago, and I've noticed that Stephen Moffat started saying it. Now, I don't know whether he's heard me or whether we've just independently both been geniuses, which is this, is that I think, you know, people should obviously slag off anything I do if they don't like it, but it's a bit like, um, especially on the internet, it's people having a chat about it down the pub. That's the analogy I use. And the last thing that you want, where you're all sitting around saying, you know, I hated the last film by so-and-so, you don't want them to pop up behind you and go, well, that really upsets me because I love that film. But, I, you know, my wife I liked it as well and all this kind of thing. You just go, well, oh, shut up. We're just being rude about you. You're not meant to be here. And that's the thing, is that I don't think I should hear about it, you know? Um, but I think that when people put derogatory things really stupidly derogatory. I had someone recently criticise something that I'd written, and they did it on the Big Finish Facebook page. And I just, and I went on there and I said, it's fine that you think this, I just want you to know that it hurts me. That's all. And that's the thing. Is when, and, and I got a load of responses saying, well, you should toughen up. I thought, well, why should I? 